Colonel Noel Parrish would be the epitome of fair-mindedness. Born in Kentucky as the son of a preacher and raised in the South, he was very familiar with the problems of segregation, but more importantly, he was able to see beyond it. Under his command, the men of the Tuskegee experiment would have a fair opportunity. Later on, we found out that he was the one who got Tuskegee on, on the track because his predecessor was almost determined that he was going to prove that blacks could not fly. But Colonel Parrish was a, an extremely fair-minded person and uh, he, gave us, he gave us the breaks. I think that he was sent there to preside over a failure. He was not a West Point graduate, he was not one of the club. He, was, he had come up through the ranks as a reserve officer. And I think the, the previous commander was a West Point graduate and he was pulled out of there, went on to become a general. And I think it, it may have held him back uh, because he was determined that it was not going to be a failure. He was on their side. But he had a very fine line to walk because the higher ups in the Army Air Corps didn't want the project to succeed. And he was determined that it would succeed, so he was caught in the middle. Parrish called a meeting of all officers, black and white, and informed them that from that day on, there would be no separate facilities. And any of the white officers who couldn't deal with that, they could bring their lunch and eat in the cars or wherever they chose to. So that ended the last uh, vestige of discrimination on the base. The base being a federal uh, institution uh, was not subject to the local state laws. When we got to uh, Tuskegee and we started flying, our flight instructors were all black. And these were people who were flying in the civilian uh, uh, program. So it's a little ironic that uh, the Army Air Corps leadership was saying blacks can't fly, but they hired black uh, instructors to give us our first uh, flight training, primary training in the PT-17. Then we moved to the Air Force base, and the instructors were all white to a man. There wasn't a single black uh, instructor there. And the instructors were of different, how shall I say, quality. I think that Parrish had arranged that uh, we got the, the best possible instructors. And I was sent to inst Central Instructor School at Maxwell Field. And it was a six week course. And about a week before the end of the course, they came in, somebody came in one day and said, we need a volunteer to go to Tuskegee. So I volunteered to go. I think, as far as I was concerned, I was sent there to do a job, which was to teach men to fly, and I did it to the best of my ability. And I believe that most of them did. And uh, if, if you did a good job, they kept you there. Many people thought that there uh, were quotas assigned, that only a certain number of us could, uh, would be allowed to finish the program and become pilots. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I always felt that my instructors were trying to get me through the program. The, test, the check pilot, Major Magoon, between primary and advance, he would help me a little when he could. Uh, I'd meet him behind that. He didn't want the whites to see him talking to me, and I didn't want the black cadets to see me talking to him. But he helped me with math, and, and when I got into basic instrument training, and he gave me a little little uh, helps as far as making it easy when you fly. But as much of a racist as he was, he turned out to be a human being in my opinion. Like I guess he figured, well, let me be of help to this guy. And, he, and I, I knew a couple more guys that he helped also. The system there made it really tough on us because they had all the training was conducted at Tuskegee. So consequently, you had a lot of upperclassmen over you. And an upperclassman's word was God. We had a hazing system at Tuskegee that was more intense than at West Point. You'd have to squat and put your hands on your heels and they'd line up three of you. And one guy, the first guy would say, I'm a duck, the second guy would say, me too. And the third guy would say, quack, quack, and you're walking all over this floor of this building. I'm a duck, quack, quack, me too. And you dare not laugh because they ride you unmercifully. You didn't walk anywhere in the area. 
You ran everywhere you had to go. And there was some verses you had to learn, which we called dodo verses. I remember one it's, uh, in the dining room that said, if you, if you had enough to eat, dummy, he said, uh, Sir, my gastronomic satiety admonishes me that I've reached that state of degradation which is consistent with my every dietetic integrity, sir. Mister, how is the cow? Or oh, dummy, how is the cow? Sir, she walks, she talks, she's full of chalk. The female of the bovine species is full of the lacteal fluid to the nth degree, sir. But you had to say it fast. If you make a mistake, you get down and do push-ups. In the dining hall, the lower classman would sit at the front of the table and he was the, the gunner. He, the food would be brought to the end of the table and you'd take it and pass it down to the upper classman who was sitting at the table. And any breach of that, could, could, you'd get the ire of the upper classman. And so my first meal in the cadet corps, I ate from under the table. <laughs> I mean, it could put you under the table. And because uh, I committed some act <laughs> that ended the didn't satisfy my upper class at the table. Well, I continued to do things. I tied his shoelaces together. <laughs> that didn't help me at all. It's a conditioning and programming uh, attempt to widow out those who can't take the pressure of what some people regard as hazing and so forth, because the military, in its ultimate role of wartime, uh, is the kind of profession in which you have to develop a thick skin. You have to develop psychologically and physically the ability to take abuse. Since this film was made, the Tuskegee Airmen have received a broad range of honors and awards. The National Parks Service has made Moton Field the Tuskegee National Monument. President George W. Bush in 2007 presided over a ceremony awarding the Tuskegee Airmen the Congressional Gold Medal the highest civilian award bestowed by Congress. President Barack Obama invited the airmen to his inauguration. And this year, the film Red Tails by legendary filmmaker George Lucas gives the airmen long overdue worldwide attention. We hope you enjoyed our film and now know the whole story of our friends and heroes, the Tuskegee Airmen.